back. Todd McClellan returns to San Jose for the first time as the Oilers head coach. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't different when you walk in the building and, and turn right instead of left. McClellan has to find a way to slow down a red hot Sharks team that has won three in a row. In front they score! Meanwhile, Edmonton searching for answers after another heartbreaking loss. Can the debut of Zach Cassian and return of Nail Yakupov push the Oilers past the Sharks for a second time this year? Answers ahead on Rogers Oilers Hockey. Welcome in. Edmonton Oilers just six points out of a playoff spot in the Western Conference. This is one of those huge four-point Pacific Division games, and they welcome this man back. Nail Yakupov, he's been out a long time. And what about this guy? All tatted up, he's ready to go. <laughs> Zach Cassian makes his Oilers debut. A familiar face, though, as well. Uh, in our broadcast out at SAP Center, Gene Principe ready to set the scene. Gene. David, thank you very much. The second last road game uh, prior to Christmas, I was in Chicago and, and bought this for my son. And a uh, bit of a problem. Um, got it out of the women's section. I'm not a great shopper. Now, my son is six foot four, so it doesn't fit. I've got the tag on it and the receipt. Should be no problem to return it. Um, speaking of returns, that's what we're talking about tonight. First off, you mentioned Todd McCullen, seven seasons, every single one of them in the playoffs except for one. 540 regular season games, two conference finals, one President's Trophy, all with this team tonight. So we'll see if it's emotional for him. Meanwhile, Zach Cassian was recently in stage two of the NHL Substance and Behavioral Program. Well, the Edmonton Oilers traded for him right after the holiday freeze. Four games in Bakersfield, one goal. Well, he's now returning to the NHL. And you talked about Nell Yakupov making his return after one of the most awkward injuries you'll ever see as he got tangled up by a linesman. In fact, the linesman brought him down. He's missed as many games as he's played. Had 12 points in those 22 games prior to getting hurt November 25th in Carolina. So we'll see what kind of return it is for those three. Uh, you know what? When I throw it back to the panel, three guys I'd never exchange, whether I had the receipt or the tag. Back to you. All right. That, that's good to know that he's not going to return us. He should return that shirt. You, you know, the talk about Todd McClellan returning there, in my mind, mm. I think he's more concerned about the lack of goal scoring in the third period and the defense in the third period in Arizona than he is at going back to SAP. Well, maybe this will help him out. John Shannon and Colby Armstrong, they have a new look, fourth line, third line, whatever you want to call it. Yakupov, Lander, Cassian, different flavor from these guys. What should we expect, Colby? Yeah, Cassian, obviously thrilled to be back. You heard all his comments and interviews. This guy's chomping at the big to get in there. I played against him. He's a competitor. He has presence. He has skill. He has speed. He has size. Yakupov, same thing. Come back at energy. You want to impress your coach? You're coming back in the lineup, played against his old team? You have a good game tonight. I wouldn't expect this line to stay together the whole night if either Cassian or Yakupov is showing some moxie. The one thing about Yakupov, you know darn well that he's going to be a key on the power play which, by the way, had two goals in Glendale, and that's a problem, too. You're, if you score two power play goals, you're supposed to win games, and that was stuck in Todd McClellan's craw as well. This is a big game, folks. When you consider the Pacific Division, when you consider Calgary's up on the weekend and they lost the game to Arizona, they have to win tonight for more than just the revenge factor for the coach. Desperation, John. Yeah. Cam Talbot and Martin Jones are your goaltenders. Kevin Quinn and Drew Remenda will have your call, and we will see some more of... Gene Principe, provided he survives this shark attack moments ago. Easy, oh, no. Gene. Look out, Gene. Uh-oh. <laughs> First period comes your way next. Rogers Oilers Hockey. Brought to you by Rogers. With Rogers, stay connected wherever your day takes you. By Molson Canadian, die-hard fan and proud partner of the Edmonton Oilers. By Ford, official automotive partner of the Edmonton Oilers. By Scotiabank, you're richer than you think. And by the Rexall family of pharmacies. 
Welcome back, everyone, as we get set for the second of four meetings between the Edmonton Oilers and the San Jose Sharks. The starting goaltenders are brought to you by Tim Hortons, the official copy of the NHL. Cam Talbot makes his first start on the road since Boxing Day. He faces San Jose for the first time in his career. Talbot will look for his third win away from Rexall. And for 26-year-old Martin Jones, it'll be his 35th start of the year. He's won his last two, including a 28-save shutout of the Maple Leafs on January the 9th. San Jose comes in having won three straight. It was Alex Stalock who is between the pipes in Winnipeg on Tuesday in a 4-1 win. Of course, the Oilers dropped a 4-3 decision in Arizona on Tuesday. Here is Fane. He will be with Sekera to start and up front. Ryan Nugent Hopkins along with Eero Pakarina and Taylor Hall. Short. With Hurdle and Pavelski. Classic and Braun are on the blue line. This is Thornton playing it back to the point. Braun with the puck now. He'll give it to Pavelski with the first shot of the game. Stopped by Cam Talbot. Taylor Hall right in front of the net. We'll give it to Fane and get it back again. Here is Hall. He'll play it off the boards. And the Oilers want to make a change. Drew, so much emotion going into this game. The Oilers know how important this contest is being in the Pacific Division. They come into this game with 38 points. San Jose sitting in that last playoff spot in third with 44. That's why the guys in the panel were talking about how important of a game this is. If you want to stay in that playoff hunt, you want to keep talking about it, then you've got to make sure you win this Pacific Division matchup. Ward behind the net for San Jose. Joel Ward. He'll give it to Marlowe. Nieto plays it back to Martin. It gets by him. You hear John and Colby. Sorry, if I didn't hear John and Colby talk about the Oilers will spend a lot of time in their zone tonight. They will. This is a good cycling team. A, good, a team that plays well down low because of the big body. So you've got to make sure that you play smart in your own zone and have terrific communication and defensive support. Burns stepping up. 40 points from the blue line for number 88. He is second among defensemen in points. He is first in goals. He's got 18 on the season. Tommy Wingle's trying to keep it in. By Pouli, an outlet pass. Davidson jumping up as Everly dumps the puck in, and it is Davidson who will go after it. He'll play it around the boards for Letestu. Behind the net, it's picked off. Here is Logan Couture. Logan Couture down the right side. He's stopped by Teddy Purcell. Couture dumps it into the corner. Around behind the net, Davidson. It is Letestu, Purcell, and Korpakoski. As the line juggling, we saw yesterday in practice is what is happening today, Drew, and you're not surprised with the way the orders have played on the road. They needed a shakeup. That's because Todd McClellan said, don't be surprised when this, <laughs> this is going to change up a little bit here. There is Nail Yakupov on the ice with Zach Cassian. Lander with a buck now. He'll play it back to Sekera. Penalty coming up to the San Jose Sharks. The Oilers will get the first power play of the game. Let's take a look at the keys to the game. They're brought to you by Ford, official automotive partner of the Edmonton Oilers. For the Oilers, they need more will than skill. They try to outskill everybody, and they really can't do that in the National Hockey League. You've got to make sure you play inside. You've got to dominate as much as you can from an emotional and physical level. And for the San Jose Sharks, it's no secret. They are terrible at home, 6-12 and 12 at home. But on the road, 15-6-2, and two, and they won their last two on the road. They play like that here. They got a great chance of winning this game. Dylan DeMello is in the penalty box for tripping. Just making a move along the boards. And as Lant Anton Lander gets there first and cuts back, Dylan DeMello gets his stick down. And that little cutback cost DeMello with two deaths. So the owner is two for three in the game against Arizona. Four power play goals in their last five games. They go to work for the first time in this game. Zekera at the point. Sekera will give it to Yakupov. Yakupov to Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins back to Sekera. Sekera steps into a slap shot deflected by Ward into the corner. Now it comes loose in front. Yakupov trying to keep it in. Hall is out there as well along with Teddy Purcell who has the puck now. Purcell feeds it to the middle. It is picked off. Cleared to the line. Sekera able to keep it in briefly. But Ward gets it out to Marlowe. Moving in shorthanded. Patrick Marlowe. Checked there by Ryan Nugent Hopkins. San Jose's penalty killing at home, just like everything about being at home for San Jose, has not been up to Sharks standard. They are 27th in the league. This is a team that is ranked 30th at home. Six wins this season here at the SAP Center. 
They are home for the next three as Dreisaitl brings it across the line. Leon Dreisaitl is checked by Matt Nieto. It comes around the boards. Everly waiting for it there. Jordan Everly back to the point it comes. Schultz has got it. Schultz will give it to Dreisaitl. Dreisaitl goes across to Everly. Everly. His shot is blocked before it can get through by Paul Martin. Unload that right away. You've got people at the net. You've got a chance to score off the rebound. Pouliot. He'll dish it off to Dreisaitl. Leon Dreisaitl. Traffic in front. Instead drops it back to Schultz. Goes across to Everly. He's got Latestu up high. In that slot area went by him. Dreisaitl plays it back to Schultz. Now the puck is down low for Benoit Pouliot. Martin watching him. He shakes him off. But now he has to deal with Burns. Pouliot. Lost it to Martin, who gave it to Nieto, and Nieto sends it slowly down the ice. Five seconds left, and you'll see from the penalty-killing tactics of the San Jose Sharks, they want to be aggressive, they want to get after you, so you're going to drive dust off the puck, you're going to get caught. The owners did not get a shot on that power play. They were 0 for 1 when these teams met December 9th in a 4-3 overtime victory. It was Taylor Hall, the hero in that game. Braun plays it off the boards. There is Lander right on him as he gets the puck to Pavelski, who sends it slowly down the ice. Tomas Hurdle at the line goes cross ice. It's picked off there by Zach Cassian. He'll give it to Yakubov. Yakubov back to Cassian, wearing number 44 for the Oilers. Back into Oiler territory, picked up there by Sekera. It was averaging almost 22 minutes a game. Ryan Nugent Hopkins with it now. He'll go cross ice. It's picked up by Mark Bain across the line. Here's a wrist shot. Shows the save. The rebound comes free. Dunstoy plays it quickly up to Tommy Wingles. Tommy Wingles moving down the right side. Wingles checked by Sekera as he sends it around the boards. Kept in by Mark Edward Glassick. Now on the near side. It's all with an opportunity to get away. Caught up there with the linesman. The order's making a change. Dunstoy with a backhand pass. Just out of the reach of Logan Couture. And picked up there by Nurse. Watched it to Couture, got it back again, and now he'll get it to Hall. Hall, cross ice pass for Jordan Everly. Martin suits it right back in. Shots are even at one apiece. We played six minutes of this first period. These teams will hook up again March 8th. That game will be in Edmonton. Paul Martin, along with Burns. Burns lets that go right to Ward. Ward back to Martin. Martin will bring it across the line. Paul Martin with it now. Martin behind the net it goes. Marlow looking for it. He's checked by Ryman. Right out in front. The puck comes. Ward had an opportunity thwarted by Puglia. Martin with a puck. He'll give it to Nieto. Nieto bumped off the puck right there by Davidson. Are the Sharks able to keep it in? Driver behind the net will leave it for Dreisaitl. Leon Dreisaitl starts the rush for Edmonton with Everly and Puglia. Gets to the line, dumps it in, and they'll head off. Mike Brown, the former Edmonton Oiler, out there now as Carlson brings it in. Nice job by Sector to stop Carlson from driving towards the net. Carlson with it again. He is out there with Chris Tierney and Mike Brown. Bain knocks down Tierney. Tierney, a big night against the Winnipeg Jets. Had a shorthanded goal and an assist. He's on a three-game point streak. Has the puck now. He'll get it to Carlson. He is checked by Sekera. Plays it to the near side. Korpakoski runs into DeMello. Nice job by Laurie Korpakoski. Smart play. Go right to the body. DeMello was, kind of, DeMello was trying to stay in and keep the puck alive. Laurie Korpakoski went body only. Well, this is one of those games, Drew, where something's got to give because you've got the 30th place home team against the 30th place road team. <laughs> and so far, it has been... A flowing game because we haven't had many whistles. In fact, just one. And that was on the penalty. Schultz sends the puck in. Nugent Hopkins out there with Paul and Pacarinen. Pacarinen getting an opportunity to play on that line as Thornton brings it back in. Here is Thornton, a centering pass, and it was behind Kirtle. Following up for Vlasic. Good hustle by Darnell Nurse to get back. And look at Darnell Lurse. Lead the rush back the other way. Nurse with some speed around Vlasic. Here is Nurse with a shot. Stopped by Jones. I like that. I like that from the kid. Donskoy is checked by Lander. Yakubov from the corner. Knocked down. Braun with it behind the net. Darnell Nurse leads all rookies in ice time and is third in block shots. Donskoy going after it behind the net. Jonas Donskoy keeps it in. 
Logan Couture has got Wingles out in front, but he's tied up there by Grimal. Cassian tips it out to center. Martin will gather it up back into his own zone. A backhand pass to Gon Gonskoy. Burn. Hard pass for Wingles right up the middle, trying to slip the D. Tommy Wingles gets spun around, and Eric Grimal is going to go to the penalty box. The San Jose Sharks will get their first power play of this game. Ryba is going to the box for Holden. So when we come back, the penalty killers of the Edmonton Oilers will go to work. Rogers, Oilers hockey on the net. Welcome back. We've been discussing the fact that it is uh, Todd McClellan's return to San Jose, and uh, they are acknowledging that here on the scoreboard at the SAP center as uh, McClellan is hopefully going to enjoy his return this was him uh, he's never had to make this kind of a walk uh, except for when he was with Detroit as he uh, watched some of the warm-up and uh, got intense on, upon his return already with one win against the Sharks hoping to make it two but this one is different because it is at his former home against his former team 311 wins behind the bench of the San Jose Sharks and playoff appearances in six of the seven years he was here. Penalty killers on the ice right now for the Edmonton Oilers. It is Korpakoski, Latestu, Fain, and Davidson. Pavelski with the puck now. Joe Pavelski, a power play goal in the victory over Winnipeg on Tuesday. Thornton down low to Marlo. Marlo trying to get it back to Thornton. It was broken up by Latestu. Fame sends it around the boards and down the ice it goes. What a nifty play by Mark Latestu. And this power play has been together for a long time. And when you watch them work, a lot of it is because of Jay Woodcroft and all the effort and coaching he put into this power play. These guys have been together for a long time and the tactics they use from Jay Woodcroft. Thornton with the puck now. Back to Burns. Fires a shot over top of the net. Broken stick, Logan. From Couture as the puck is sent down the ice. The seventh ranked power play in the league overall, but when they come home, they are 21st. It's, it's mind boggling, the Jekyll and Hyde show. Scoring has also been a problem at home for them. They're ranked 28th at home. They go on the road, they're number one. They've got 41 seconds of power play time remaining. Don score. Tomash Hurdle sends it around the boards. Waiting for it there is Ward. Here is Davidson trying to get it by Donskoy. Can't do it. Opportunity for Nurse to get it to Nugent Hopkins. He does. Teddy Purcell trying to get it out and just manages to get that puck to center. Brandon Dav it. Sorry, partner. Brandon Davidson has got to learn to go away from pressure on the penalty kill. Nurse with it now. He'll play it behind the net. Intercepted by Hurdle. Back to the point it comes. Amello will give it to Donskoy. Right out in front is Hurdle. He'll bang away at it, but Talbot stands his ground and makes the save. You know your business. We know how to protect it. Inside Insurance, specializing in the oil and gas and construction industries. InsideInsurance.ca This is a play the Sharks really like because they want to throw it down towards the net. And then Tomas Hurdle or sometimes Patrick Marlow, maybe Joe Pavelski in front. You try a little spin move. Sometimes you bring that to your forehand, try to go upstairs. Or you try to just jam it in the backhand like Tomas did right there. Cam Talbot very strong, not buying either move from Hurdle. Joe Pavelski will take the draw. He leads this team in goals with 22 as he wins it back to Dillon. Thornton checked immediately by Sekera. The penalty is over. Kleib is back on the ice and he's got the puck and he's got Lander going with him. Along with Korpakoski. And offside at the line. It's Rogers, Oilers hockey. And it's right here on Sportsnet. Welcome back, Zach Cassian, uh, intently looking on as part of his first game with the Edmonton Oilers, acquired in a one-for-one -one deal with Montreal for Ben Scrivens. A little history as a former member of the Windsor Spitfires, a teammate of Taylor Halls, and a winner of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. 13th overall in 2009, the year John Tavares was the first overall pick. Uh, hard not to recognize Zach with that signature smile, thanks to the missing tooth. Where is 44 because of, uh, well, former... 44 with Vancouver Todd Bertuzzi he was very excited to be a member of the Montreal Canadiens as we know things did not go well he has cleaned up his life and making a comeback that will be good for him the team but most importantly the person Zach Cassidy. His last game in the NHL June March 14th of 2015. Classic shot scores.
Jose. Just a fly pattern to Mark Edward Vlasic gets up wide, gets it, and then just the perfect shot. When you look at it, Cam Talbot looks over. He looks like he's okay, and it's off the end. Well, maybe, uh, sorry, if it's a short sider, I thought it went wide side from way up here, but that's a short sider. Cam Talbot definitely wants back. That's why he looked down on where he was positioned. Mark Edward Vlasic doesn't score very often, but that's a big goal because when the Sharks score first, they're perfect. Mark Edward Vlasa came into the game without a goal in his last 10 games. He's now got five on the season. And the Sharks have a 1-0 lead at 11.29 of the first period on their fourth shot of the contest. The owners have just two shots. Dancing in is Schultz. His backhand goes over the top of the net. Pouliot. He'll go cross ice. Thrown on net by Schultz. Picked up on the near side by Pouliot one more time. Out there with Dreisaitl. Jordan Everly behind the cage. Drop it back. But Nurse was going the other way. The way. The way. As Talbot quickly plays it up to Dreisaitl. San Jose on a line change. 7.45 left to go here in the first period. Logan Couture. Helps the puck in. Going after it. On score. Down by Davidson. Mark Letestu. His pass, Zach Cassian, broken up by Brendan Dillon. Chopped in by Tommy Wingle. Couture from the corner. Plays it behind the net. Gonsboy against Davidson. Kenny Purcell to the middle for Letestu. Mark Letestu. Gains the line. Now he'll stop up. Wait. Trigger ready for Sekera. He has the puck at the line. Sekera and Fain on the blue line for the Oilers. This is Sekera. He'll throw it into the corner for Cassian. Cassian. To Yakubov. Back to the point for Sekera. Wines fires a blast through traffic. That hit his teammate. Jones looking for it as the shot goes wide. Yakubov picks it up on the near side. Sekera keeps it in for Lander. Anton Lander as the Oilers make a change. Korpakoski on the ice. Fain with a puck. Throws it towards the net. That's blocked. Opportunity now for Lander. Put it down low for Yakubov. Sharp angle. Shot goes right through. Fain with a blast. Rebound in front for Lander and it just went by him. Anton Lander. Right there. Boy, he's got zero luck this year around the goal. Good kick back though. Good pressure back after the goal against. Shots have evened up at four apiece. That's Taylor Hall. Pass for Nugent Hopkins. Hopped over his stick. Nurse able to carry on by throwing that puck in deep. Nugent Hopkins. That puck arena out in front. Circles the net. Here is Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Drop pass for Schultz. His shot. Dribbles wide as Hall may have got a piece of it. Martin with it now. Paul Martin trying to skate things out of danger. Instead he'll play it back to Burns that's in his skates. And that puck goes down the ice. Kavelski going after it. Nurse gets there first, but he can't get it out. Then he blocks a pass. That was intended for Pavelski, who was standing in front of the net. Keep an eye on the Sharks. They're really stretching out of the zone, and they've hit a couple of those passes. One of them resulted in the goal, but people are taken off out of the zone early, and the defense for the Oilers will have to be aware. Martin and Burns play catch behind the net. Burns. Starts away with Dreisaitl on his tail. Dishes off to Paul Martin. Ward up front with Marlowe and Nieto. Shot in by Justin Braun. Davidson will pick it up behind the net. He and Dreiba together. Dreisaitl's line on the ice. Davidson hammers the puck in. Zach Cassian out there now with Dreisaitl and Eberle. So the line juggling will continue throughout this game. We kind of knew that was going to happen. Couture shot. Big rebound. Another chance. Stopped by Talbot. Wingles let that one go. Lassick lays it off the end board. Sekera sends it around the boards, but he does finally get it to Dreisaitl, who lost it to Braun. Broken stick for Cassian. Wingles put it to the middle, and it was picked off there by Fane. Here's Teddy Burstall. 
Oh, gets slash. the line and gets oh, wow. by Braun. That's a slash, no call by the official. I'm shocked at that. That's an over the top, even she doesn't even break the stick, but it's an over the top chop. Almost took the stick out of his hands. Lachestu, Purcell, Cassian. Side of the net, plays it back up top, waiting for it there is Schultz. Schultz will give it to Latestu. Down low is Schultz, right out in front is Purcell as it comes back to the point. Nurse with it now. Nurse. Fooling around with it and get it to the net. It was checked by uh, Mike Brown. Hello, shoots that one wide. There's far too much dust in the puck off for my liking. There's with it now. He'll take his time. Flip it ahead for Korpakoski just out of his reach. We've got three and a half minutes left to go in this first period. Tomas Hurdle gains the line. That's as far as he got. Buck sent into the far corner. Picked up there by Davidson. He'll give it to Nurse. Nurse plays it off the boards, and that will go right down on to Martin Jones. The owners will be able to get a change in. Burns finds the Edo, crisscrossing with Ward. Ward lost it. Langer back the other way. Skates by Marlow. Langer moving in with Hall, and Yakubov fires his shot. Blocked before it could get through. Hall trying to carry on. He was checked, and the puck is sent down into Oiler territory. No icing on the play. Sekera back to get it. Nugent Hopkins waiting for it on the far side. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, he can't get it out, but he'll get a second opportunity to go up the middle for Hall. Out of his reach. Hall. With Pakarinen and Nugent Hopkins. This is Ido Pakarinen. Fanned on the shot. Now he'll play it low for Hall. Hall behind the net. Classic watching him. Logan Couture. Moving ahead with Donscore. He'll find Braun instead. Braun moving in. Braun is checked by Sekera. Battle for the puck in the corner. It's still alive. Nugent Hopkins can't get it by Tommy Wingles. Here is Wingles. Dishes off. Vlasic, another shot deflected, and that one missed. Hall picks it up on the near side. Into the shift for him. He'll just rip the long shot in. Take a hit from Vlasic as he makes a change. Drysaddle and Everly now. Leon Drysaddle drops it back. To Pouliot. Pouliot given a bump. Dry saddle. All the way back up top for Schultz. Schultz a wrist shot and that one doesn't get through. Carlson blocked it. Schultz gets it to Nurse. Nurse will try his luck against Mike Brown. Down low. Nurse behind the net. Still has the puck. He'll leave it there. Dry saddle. Opportunity out in front. It comes. Pouliot shot. Juggled by Jones. He's without his stick. Martin Jones without a stick. Pouliot with a puck. He'll give it to Everly. Jordan Everly works his way all the way back to the blue line. Drop pass for Schultz. He'll give it to Pouliot. Pouliot goes cross ice. Nurse bobbled it. Dunker Carlson wants to get it down the ice. Boy, what a reprieve for Martin Jones because the Oilers had all kinds of pressure with a tired Sharks team out. But they can't change. They got one only. Why do we put so much effort into engineering the Can-Am Defender? Because a job worth doing is worth doing right. Talked about the stretching of the San Jose Sharks. They're going to stretch out, get out of the zone early, fly the zone early. Joe Thornton backhands it. Mark Edward Vlasic's one of the guys that ends up up ice. Melker Carlson gives the pass over. Mark Edward Vlasic, the defenseman. Joe Thornton behind the goal line. He fires that long pass to Carlson. And one that beat Cam Talbot. And I'm sure when he looks at his short side, he's not very happy about it. Joe Thornton leads the team with 24 assists and a four-game point streak now. Private shot is cleared away by Braun. We're under a minute to go in the first period. Kenny Purcell with it now. Kenny Purcell fires a shot that goes wide. Thornton picks it up on the far side. Joe Thornton to the middle. It goes to my hurdle with it. Hurdle calls the short side. He hits the side of the net. Cassian with it now. Cassian. Letestu and Purcell. Brendan Dillon giving a huge Ooh. hit there by Zach Cassian. See that one coming, couldn't you? <laughs> That's a hard one. There is Thornton. Works his way across the blue line. Drop pass for Hurdle. Gets it back again. Thornton plays it to the point. Burns hammers a shot. And that one hits the glass. Comes all the way back down into San Jose territory. That's the big shot from Brent Burns. He can bomb it. He had 60 points last year. He's got 40 already this year. Nieto with it now at center. As time winds down in the period. Nieto, a shot right at the horn. 
The Oilers get outshot 7-6 in that period and outscored 1-0. Let's go back to David Amber. Welcome back to Rogers Oilers Hockey as Edmonton is uh, taking on San Jose. And we move from uh, one NHL arena to a soon-to-be other one. You're invited to the city of Edmonton sneak peek of Rogers Place this Saturday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The city of Edmonton is offering the chance to get a first-hand look at Rogers Place. And the sneak peek will provide an opportunity to get a ringside view of the entire bowl and a chance to see the downtown community arena. For more information, visit edmonton.ca. Thanks, Gene. The first period scoring summary brought to you by Warley Parsons Cord. Visit WarleyParsonsCord.com to join our leading industrial construction team and enjoy great benefits and a safe work environment. Mark Edward Vlasic, his fifth of the year from Melker Carlson and Big Joe Thornton. I thought the Oilers played well that period. They got our shot 7-6, but had a lot of offensive zone time and shut down the Sharks cycle. Zach Cassian played four minutes and 45 seconds in his first game in an Oiler uniform. Had two hits in that game, including a big one in that period, including a big one against Brendan Dillon. As Todd McClellan had some good times here in San Jose, including a President's Trophy in 2008-2009. Two trips to the conference finals. Lost to the National Stanley Cup champion, Chicago Blackhawks. When you look at Todd's numbers here, it was a very interesting situation coming into. Not like he was with the Oilers. When he came in here, it was get us to the Stanley Cup and help us win it. That's a real hard thing to do. There's a lot of people in San Jose found out. Part of a season that saw them win 53 games, 117 points. 2008-2009, they won the President's Trophy. Right now, his team trails by one as the second period is underway. Joe Thornton hammers the puck in. Talbot. Leaves it there for Sekera, stolen by Thornton. Thornton looking for Pavelski. Sekera recovers and gets it to Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins with Hall and Pacarina. Nugent Hopkins fires his shot. And Justin Braun got a stick in the way and put it into the netting. One thing the defense do very well for the San Jose Sharks is they get their sticks on pucks. And yeah, a lot of their credit goes to Jim Johnson, Larry Robinson, who coached here as well. They're very good, especially a guy like Justin Braun. He's tall, he's got a long stick, and he's able to use that reach effectively. Just at the last minute turns, reads that, no, that Ryan Nugent Hopkins is going to take the shot, and he's able just to snap it away. Leon Dreisaitl will step in against Joel Ward. Ward wins the draw, gets it to Burns, leaves it behind the net. Paul Martin intercepted by Schultz. Martin gets it right back again. Matt Nieto fires it around the boards. Nurse had that puck go straight up in the air. It was weird. He stumbled <laughs> trying to recover. Ward's got the puck now. Ward checked by Nurse. Jordan Everly trying to help out. Leon Dreisaitl plays it right to Schultz. Schultz will go cross ice for Everly. That's broken up. Ward will get it back to Burns. You're better off if you're Justin Schultz there instead of trying that wide pass. Use your feet. Get up ice. Martin hangs on to it. Martin is the woe and Burns is the go. <laughs> Wingles behind the net. Wingles, Donskoy, and Couture. Couture plays it back to the point. Camelo steps into a shot that knocked the stick right out of Cassian's hand. He gets it back again. Donskoy goes across Camelo. He'll tie it to the corner. Wingles watched by Nurse. Nurse has been out there for a while. Donskoy with the puck now. Jonas Donskoy has got Couture in front and he slid it just wide. Logan Couture trying to center it. It does come to the middle, but the Oilers able to clear it down the ice. One thing Zach Cassie, and you watch him in the zone, he communicates very well and he's very good at getting pucks out. Played four goal games in Bakersfield and got one goal as Carlson dropped that puck back and went offside. Cotswood Interiors, everything a furniture store should be. Inspiring selection, complimentary design service, and quality you can trust. Safeway's million dollar score and win if any Oilers player scores five goals in tonight's game. Teresa Morrison of Edmonton could win one million dollars. Shop at Safeway and you could be our next lucky winner right here on Sportsnet. Right here, it's a one nothing game. The Sharks have seven shots, the Oilers with six. Davidson, a wrist shot that missed the target. Picked up on the near side and sent down the ice by Carlson. 
Tierney trying to gain the zone, which stood up there by Griba, and a penalty coming up. Brown then ran into Griba, and that draws a crowd. Maybe two minutes to Eric Griba, second penalty of the game for Eric. Chris Tierney is going off the ice limping. Well, that's an interference, no doubt. Here's Zach Cassian, have a quick glance at him in the zone, gets his stick on the puck, knocks the stick out of his hand, scoops it up real quick, and then as the play continues, it goes up top. Watch the communication if we get a chance to see it. There's going to be a switch up top. He, he continues to work, gets back into the position, and then later on there's a switch up top that he was communicating, you go there, I'm going to stay with this guy over here, and then was able to help get the puck out. And this potent power play, even though it's not very good at home, it's still dangerous because you look at the five guys on the ice. They had two shots in the first period with a man advantage. Davidson plays it off the boards, took a funny hop up the stanchion. Burns picks it up in neutral ice. They will give it to Pavelski. Pavelski up the middle for Marlow. Marlow drop pass for Couture, dropped it back to Burns. Burns goes across to Thornton. Joe Thornton being watched by Lori Korpakoski. Here's Couture stepping out from behind the net to get a shot away, stopped by Talbot. Is that move we talked about? Back up top, it's Burns. Burns. Shot doesn't make it through. Burns will chase it down and keep it in. Couture able to keep that puck in for Pavelski. And he'll get it back in the corner. Logan Couture. Pavelski out in front. Snaps a shot. The Talbot makes the save on. Couture gets it back again. Logan Couture down to Pavelski. He's got Marlowe in front now. Thornton near side will receive the puck. Thornton gives it back. Pass for Marlowe, back to Burns, takes the shot, sharp angle shot by Couture. Marlowe from the corner. Patrick Marlowe, out in front for Pavelski, good play there by Fane. Schultz with it now, Burns with it now to Thornton, he'll give it back to Burns, Burns missed it. And Fane got it, and sent it down the ice. They needed that clear. They'll get a change in with 35 seconds left to go. And the second power play of the game for the San Jose Sharks. Joel Ward backhands it in. Talbot plays it himself to Nurse. He's around the boards. Mark Edward Lassick can't keep it in. Penalty killing up front. Pacarin and, and Lander. Ward, Herbal, and Dunstall. The forward line for the San Jose Sharks. Pacarin finds the puck and sends it the length of the ice. Eric Ryba ready to get back on the ice. DeMello shoots it in as Ryba gets back. San Jose now 0 for 2 in this hockey game. 0 for 3 when these teams met on December the 9th. And as Drew mentioned, their power play has been clicking. They are 7th in the league. They had 6 power play goals in their last 6 games before tonight's. Jones to Martin. Martin around the boards for Nieto. Can't get it by Schultz. Schultz has the puck stolen. Here comes Nieto. Nieto dishes for Tierney. Gets it back again, but there is Nugent Hopkins. Schultz. Griba. Taylor Hall moving in against Braun. Nugent Hopkins with it now. Ryan Nugent Hopkins. He'll go cross ice. Davidson trying to get it settled down. Tierney has an opportunity to get at Nieto and does. Davidson recovers defensively. Ryba plays it along the boards. Hall with it now. Snaps the shot. Jones the save. The rebound ends up in the corner. He's looking behind him there. Thornton to the middle for Hurdle. Nurse with it now. Checked by Tomas Hurdle. Thornton trying to dig it free. Instead, it comes back to Everly. He'll play it to the middle. Thornton on the steal, moving in with Pavelski. Thornton trying to make a power move around Nurse. He was denied, but the Sharks able to keep it in. Burns, the middle for Pavelski was alone, but the puck was behind him. Dillon sees it go by him. Good speed there by Dreisaitl. Takes a hit from Dillon. Stays with it, has the puck in the corner. Leon Dreisaitl is checked. Trying to help out is Pouliot. He gets knocked down. Everly in there as well as the puck squirts free, and Dillon's got it. Dillon with Nieto and Marlowe. Back Nieto. Cutting for the net. Nieto circles. Marlowe out in front. 
Nieto hangs on to it, throws it towards the net. Rebound opportunity, and Ward looks skyward as he was denied with a little help from Pouliot. Ward's got it again. Another shot. Rebound comes right to Blasek. He lets it go. Talbot the save. The puck is loose in front. Nieto puts it towards the cage, and Talbot covers up. Taylor Hall. 16 goals on the season. Stopped by Jones. Back, it's been uh, power ball fever in the United States, and for that matter, all across North America. So I had a lot of uh, new friends who wanted uh, tickets for the uh, lottery that was worth $1.5 billion. Eventually, there were a total of uh, three winners. Uh, Brandon Davidson bought some tickets, and his dad, Scott, drove from Lethbridge into the United States an hour and a half to get more. And Eric Greib, a poor guy, he bought some as well, $100 worth, but he, he kind of bought the wrong ticket as it uh, will last for the next month. So, unfortunately, he did uh, Greib up. The wrong one, <laughs> but he may have the last laugh. He might. <laughs> Patrick Marlowe behind the net. Patrick Marlowe playing in his 502nd straight game. Back to the point. Demello lets it go through traffic. The rebound is cleared and picked up now by Teddy Purcell. Purcell with Cassian. Purcell behind the net for Zach Cassian. Given a hard hit there by Brendan Dillon. Dillon, six foot four, 225 pounds. It'll turn about fair play because Cassian caught him in the first period. Purcell plays it behind the net. Cassian with it again. Gets it back to Teddy Purcell. Purcell trying to return the favor. But instead it's Demello there to get it to Marlowe. Marlowe to Ward. Ward pinned. And a good job by Anton Lander. As the puck is eventually sent down the ice. Darnell didn't see it. Didn't know where it was. <laughs> it hit the dasher. Schultz to the middle. Flying through is Yakupov. Dale Yakupov, right out in front it comes, looking for Cassian. Tommy Wingles. Mark Edward Vlasic, Vlasic to Couture. Couture with Wingles in front, lets the shot go. Big rebound for Vlasic and he put it just wide. Chance for his second goal of the game. Quickly back the other way. Here's Korpakoski, Korpakoski, Yakupov! Nail Yakupov, welcome back as he ties the game at one. He had missed 22 games with an ankle injury, but he's got three goals on the season. Close call first. Mark Edward Vlasic gets a dynamite opportunity. He jumps in. He's the late guy. Just goes wide. The puck's going to clear, and it hits the official in the neutral zone. That slows it up, and that allows Korpakoski to get to it, and then a beautiful pass beats Justin Braun with the pass. Perfectly timed by Lori Korpakoski and put away by Neil Yakupov. He's back and the Oilers are back into a tight situation. How often do we see it? Close call or big save at one end and comes back and it's a goal at the other. Neil Yakupov came in without a goal in 17 games. He gets his third of the season. Schultz and Korpakoski get the helpers. 8.02 the time of the goal but it's tied it at one. Hall with it now. Hall. Pacarina. And offside is Brandon Davidson. And we have our first winner in our score and win contest. On behalf of Safeway and Quaker Crispy Minis or Rice Cakes, James Rice of Camrose, if he was from Boston, he'd be Jim Rice, has won a $250 Visions Electronics gift card. Congratulations, James, on the goal by Neil Yakupov. Neil Yakupov's got one thing on his mind. Get to the net, get your stick down heavy, and when he gets that opportunity, he snaps it. It's a hard to get one time a puck that comes across your body, but it was perfectly placed by... Corey Korpakoski. Korpakoski with six helpers on the season. Justin Schultz now has eight points. He had a power play goal and an assist against Arizona. Four points in his last four games for number 19. Couture throws it towards the net. Dunn's going looking for the rebound. It's sitting in front of Cam Talbot. Can't clear it away. Couture with a chance. Stopped. Well, that's a good play by Logan Couture. He just turns from the boards and fires a sneaky little shot. All checked by Vlasic. And sent down the ice. Andre Sekera played the most of any Oilers in that first period. Missed the pass for Everly, and it's going to be icing. Logan Couture up along the boards. Josh on the cycle. He just turns and fires. Nobody expects it. It's right on the ice. It gets to the net, and then Cam Talbot's got to scramble. His puck is sitting there all by itself. He tries to clear it away, but the puck bounces. He's in perfect position with the paddle down to make the save, even though he doesn't see it. But from the goal angle, in the net cam, you're going to see all kinds of scramble. Logan Couture looking up, 
Logan Couture is only his 12th game this year. He had a broken leg, and then against the Edmonton Oilers, suffered uh, trauma to the leg that turned into an arterial bleed. And we talked to him about it when it was happening, and Logan said it was a pretty scary 48 hours, but he's good now. He's back, he's healthy, and he's playing pretty well. Six points on the season for him, and as Drew mentioned, just his 12th game of the year. 18 to 8, the shots on goal favor the Sharks, but it's a 1 1 game thanks to Nail Yakupov. Griba at the blue line, circles, keeps it in for Pouliot, who sends it around the boards. Mike Brown waiting for it on the far side. And he will get it up to Chris Tierney. Tierney crisscrossing with Carlson. Carlson, a backhand. Talbot makes the easy save and sends it to the corner. It's a 2 on 2 with a back checker. That should not have been allowed in the zone. You've got to be a tighter gap team than that. Dreisaitl trying to get it out and does. This is Pouliot. He and Everly switch at the line, but Pouliot was astride offside. The 2016 Can-Am Spider F3T. Riding as evolved. Available at Martin Motorsports. We told you this is a Jekyll and Hyde team on the road dynamic outstanding their numbers are off the charts some of the best in the national hockey league at home they can't win at home while well, they've won six games but they haven't won a back-to-back -back home game all year long and maybe that's why you see so many empty seats 46 goals at home 72 on the road opportunity right there for another one from dylan he put it wide then centered it and it was picked up by cassian zach cassian sharp angle shot saved by jones ward Drops it back for Nieto. He will dump it in. Ward will go after it against Nurse. Helped out there by Marlow. Nurse. Schultz quickly up for Purcell. Danny Purcell gains the line. Flips it in. The Mark Letestu will get it. Pass intended for Hall. Broken up. Hall recovers. Checked by Thornton and Pavelski. Bakarina back to the point. Here's Sekera. His shot deflected into the near corner. Hall whips that back to Fane. Hall. Straight out in front. Pacarina an opportunity. Hall with it again. He'll play it back to Sekera. Sekera moves to the middle. His wrist shot deflected wide. Vlasic plays it off the board. Sekera there again to keep it in. Oilers with good pressure. Pacarina, Nugent Hopkins, and Hall up front. Fane and Sekera on the blue line. Pavelski with it now. He'll outlet pass to Thornton. Thornton to the middle. It goes for Hurdle. That pass didn't work. And then Hurdle runs into Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins from the corner with 8.34 left to go in the second period. Neil Yakupov against Logan Couture. Paul Martin gets it to settle down and then he knocked down Lori Korpakoski. Sekera just chips the puck in as the Oilers want to make a change. The Oilers will go home to play Calgary on Saturday. Another Pacific Division foe. They are 5-7-2 and two in their own division. Basically, it's a road game, though, because they go home and then the next day leave again for Florida. And that is when Matt Hendricks will be available to the team. His suspension will be over. Hendricks and Cassian, that's a nice little mix when you get them in the same lineup together. Julian with a seal. With Lander and Eberle. Joel Ward gets to center. Chips it in. Goes after it himself. Dryba has the angle. Dryba will get there first. Davidson in to help out. Leon Dreisaitl leads the rush back for the Oilers. Trying to get by DeMello. Can't do it. Here's Eberle at the side of the net. He will circle. Jordan Eberle hangs onto it. Now he'll kick it near side for Dreisaitl, back up top, Schultz, wrist shot, and that one whistled wide. Ward on the far side, checked by Eberle. Comes back to Nurse, he'll give it to Schultz, he'll bring it in, long shot, but that was offside. Yeah, because of Jordan Eberle, he was slow getting off the ice. Rogers, Oilers hockey, right here on Sportsnet. Welcome back. A reminder that Safeway's featured participating product for tonight's telecast is Quaker Crispy Minis or Rice Cakes. Well, I owe Jordan everybody an apology because this is why he was slow getting off the ice. Joel Ward's got a hold of him there, and so 
when you have Joel Ward grabbing you, I was saying you were slow getting off the ice. He had a little bit of resistance there. A hold causes an offside. Yeah, and I saw your, your apology comes from your friendly neighborhood killer commentator. <laughs> <laughs> Carlson with the puck now. Carlson gets knocked down. Under seven minutes left to go in the second period. Tied at one. The shot's 20 to 10 in favor of the Oilers. Well, make it 20 to 11 now as Nurse let that one go. Darnell Nurse still needs the game. Well, still needs to slow down and let the game come to him. Talking to Jimmy Johnson, the coaching staff, about Darnell. They love his energy. They love the fact he's a gamer. They love the fact that he has tons of courage, jumps up in the play makes things happen, but they still want him just to slow down a little bit. Don't chase the game, let it come to you. And the better he gets and the more games he gets, he will just be able to relax. And you've got a guy who played over 800 games as a defenseman in the National Hockey League, helping out a guy like Darnell Nurse, he's only going to get better and better and better. Darnell Nurse played 25 minutes and 37 seconds in that game in Arizona on Tuesday. Averaging 21-14 a game. Mark Edward Blasson, they got the goal for the San Jose Sharks in the first period, sends it around the boards. Nugent Hopkins plays it back for Nurse. Nurse, got Thornton bearing down on him, recovers, and gets the puck to Hall. Pavelski keeps it in for San Jose. Again, Nurse against Thornton, right out in front it comes to Blasson. Blasson. To Pavelski, he'll go cross ice for Braun. Braun, a wrist shot, doesn't make it through, but it does come to Thornton, who turns, and his shot goes off Justin Schultz. Thornton, Pavelski. Pavelski is behind the net. Joe Pavelski in the corner now. Darnell Nurse, really good job on Joe Pavelski, and that's not easy. Pacarinen gives it to Hall. Hall waits as the orders make a change. Hall. The Sekera kick pass for Yakupov didn't work. Opportunity for Braun back the other way. Talbot will clear. Sharks making a change. The Oilers try and take advantage. Here comes Yakupov with Lander. Yakupov coming for the hit shot. Stop. Another chance denied. And it goes up into the netting. And it looks like that high ankle sprain of <laughs> Neil Yakupov is 100% healed. Welcome back, Neil Yakupov. has had a successful return to the lineup, and some of the credit should probably go to Edmonton Oilers assistant coach Jim Johnson, who puts all injured players through a certain skate test uh, that he developed just to make sure that their fitness is very good upon their return. Uh, here's a look at what he makes them do. Puck protection as he has other players lean on them. They have to stop and then shoot. Retrieval when it comes to getting the puck. Stop out front, then back check. Then you have to regroup and forecheck all in 45 seconds. And yes, Yakupov nailed it. <laughs> and he's out there now. With 5.39 left to go in the second period. Well, Jimmy Johnson started that chest test a long time ago when he was assistant coach in Phoenix. He did the first time on Shane Doan. Bobby Francis was the coach then and said, keep this up. This is this works for us. This is a good test. And now he's using it all the way here. Patrick Marlowe stopped by Griba. Lander behind his own net to Griba. Purcell off the boards for Yakupov. Flying down to Dylan. Now he'll play it to Griba. Griba with a shot that is blocked. Picked up by Marlowe. Down the ice it goes, and that's coming back on the icing call. Well, Todd McClellan's got his team going now. In the second period, it was early with the San Jose Sharks getting all the pressure. It's still some cycle that's going on, but Todd's right now, you can see him. He's been working the bench quite hard tonight. He's been back and forth. He's been patting guys and lifting guys up. He has to walk that fine line of kicking guys in the rear end, but at the same time keeping him, patting him on the back. So. Well, we saw the game against Arizona where he put this line together, Dreisaitl, Pouliot, and Everly, and it connected. Well, they have stayed together. Everly with the puck now for Dreisaitl. Dreisaitl checked by Marlowe. Pouliot comes out to help out. Pouliot. From the corner, back up top, it goes to Fane. He'll go across to Sekera. Sekera lets it go. The rebound cleared and picked up by Ward. Ward will drop it there for Dillon. He'll chop it into the order zone as the Sharks want to make a change. 20 shots for the Sharks, 13 for the Oilers. Dry side checked by Wingles. 
Dillon plays it off the boards. Can't get it by Fain. Fain to Dreisaitl. Throws it towards the net. A bouncing puck comes to Everly. Dreisaitl gets it away from Dillon. Nifty little pass there to Hall in traffic. Well, the Oilers keeping the Sharks hemmed in their own zone. And the fourth key for their Oilers. More will than skill. They're showing this. And offside at the line. It's game time. A reversal of fortune and not in the good way. The last 21 games of the San Jose Sharks, first eight, they were terrific out of the I'm sorry, the Oilers, they were terrific out of the box. That's a fine. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's the court, big cheap. boy. Here's a dollar. All right, there you go. And it's a U.S. Thank dollar. At that. Yes. But the big thing on that, the goal's four. The goal's four is just they've not even put the puck in the net. We talked about that last game. Tierney behind the net. He's got Carlson out in front. Nieto with it now. Matt Nieto back to Burns. Burns gets it to settle down. Now he'll let a wrist shot go, and he didn't miss by much. That's the other thing about Brent Burns. Brighton shot gets deflected up into the netting. When he shoots at Brent Burns, he doesn't have to move very much to find that shooting lane. He can just do it using his hands because he's a big guy and he extends his reach either inside or out. He gets that. <laughs> that beer is amazing. <laughs> that beer is absolutely amazing. But here's the trap. Like, Taylor Hall thinks he's got lined up and he just moves his wrist a little bit and then snaps it, and that puck gets through the net. No defenseman has taken more shots than number 88 so far this season, and you can see where he ranks in a lot of the offensive categories. Uh, number one in beards, by the way. Absolutely. It's Joe Thornton, a close second, but his is a little neater. Yeah. <laughs> Burns' beard has a mind of its own. <laughs> Joe Thornton gains the zone, but offside was Tomas Hurdle. Party with the Sharks on January But say, Joe Thornton, though, to be honest, I've known Joe for a long, long time. That's probably a week. <laughs> it, it, you can hear it growing. You can hear it growing. I mean, he shaves, and by the time he's walked out of the dressing room, he's got the 5 o'clock shadow. They, rather, you're a stupid individual that nobody is like Brent Burns. That thing is, that thing's on there, man. <laughs> and gets dumped there by Ward. Ward will get it to Nieto. Nieto, Marlowe, his shot, save. Rebound, Ward goes wide. Sekera without a stick. Nieto with a puck. Nieto goes down low for Ward. Sneaking down in behind was Braun. But the puck instead comes to Vlasic. Vlasic moves along the line as Letestu has given his stick away. Vlasic will get it to Braun. Braun. Down deep, plays it back to Marlowe, gets it back again. Braun goes cross ice, high slot, there's a shot by Blassett. Blassett goes into the corner to retrieve. Now he'll play it back to the point, waiting for it there is Justin Braun. He'll go across to Marlowe, get the puck back again. Being shadowed by Fain, who gives him a shove, sends him to the ice, took Sekiro with him. Now they pile up in behind. Fame again pins Braun into the boards with 2.15 left to go here in the second. Now an opportunity for Teddy Purcell with Zach Cassian. At the end of the shift, they will dump that one in as Jones leaves it for Vlasic. Vlasic scored at 11.29 of the first, nailed Yakupov at 8.02 of the second. And that's where we stand. Pavelski across the blue line. Joe Pavelski, the team's leading goal getter, plays it back to Dillon at the point. Dillon with a wrist shot through traffic that rattles off the glass. Anton Lander chips it out to center. Burns is there. He'll go across the hurdle. Off the boards, too far for him. It's picked up by Pavelski at center. He is in turn checked by Lander, who gets it to Hall. Hall, hard pass for Yakubov, a weak backhand. That one was stopped. Thornton will give it to Pavelski. Pavelski, slow to the line. It's knocked down by Hall's high stick. Can't wait to share your experience on the road like these fans. If you're catching a game in the U.S., you can share all your experiences as they happen with friends and fans back home. With Rome Like Home from Rogers, you can use your phone exactly like you do at home, starting at $5 a day in the U.S. Go to rogers.com slash Rome Like Home for details. Here, I think, Kevin, I don't know what you think, but when you don't have your stick, 
when a guy loses a stick, now defensively you've got to play your position. But if you're the forward that ends up Mark Lichester giving his stick away, you should just then just go stand beside a defenseman. Just go stand there and shadow him. There's no use trying to play D when you don't have your biggest defensive weapon, your stick. I think what you think, Drew. <laughs> Since when? <laughs> don't do that. You're, it's going to really limit your career. <laughs> Tommy Lingle, Wingles bounces it in, and Talbot makes the save. We're under a minute to go in the period. It's Tommy Wingles, who is a spark plug for the San Jose Sharks. He's a terrific kid. He works extremely hard. They expect more from him offensively, but he's really never been a big goal scorer in his life. Tommy's got three goals right now. They hoped he would get to the 20 goal point. I don't think he's ever going to get there, but for Pete DeBoer, he's a guy you trust. He goes out, he's earnest, he hits people, he goes to the front of the net, and when he has to, he'll drop the gloves. Pavelski won the draw, but they'll do it again. San Jose has two players going to the All-Star game with Joe Pavelski and Brent Burns. Pavelski tied for sixth in the league in points. He is sixth in goals. The San Jose Sharks are the fifth best face-off team in the league, but the Oilers won that battle in the first. That was one of the things that Todd McClellan, when he got here, he and Jay Woodcroft, they put a lot of effort into those face-offs, and Jay has done the same thing with the Edmonton Oilers. After every practice, after every morning skate, they're working on the draws. Everly with the steal, he'll get it to Dreisaitl. Dreisaitl, Nugent Hopkins, up front with Everly. Burns, Nugent Hopkins come together, the puck's still alive. Burns trying to get it out, Dreisaitl over to help. Holding penalty. And a penalty coming up, and it will be holding. With 23 seconds to go, Ryan Nugent Hopkins is arguing his way to the sin bin. Number 93. He's in on the four check. And that little grab right there, I think the second grab, he already knew he was getting a penalty. So he thought, what the heck, I might as well just make sure he gets squeezed up on the boards. But another power play opportunity for five guys who can really move that puck around. Third power play for the San Jose Sharks. That's the same number they had when these teams met on December the 9th. Babelski. He's got seven power play goals on the season. Shot from Couture is blocked. Another chance stopped by Talbot. And Cam Talbot reaches back as Jumbo Joe was right there. Smart play by Logan Couture again. Just get the quick shots in the net. What we talked about with Jordan Everly in the first period, Logan Couture does. It comes back to him. He's just going to drill it right away. And then he's got Joe Thornton standing there. But a second, third save, second and third save, I should say, by Cam Talbot off big Joe Thornton in front. Kowalski against Lander. Lander wins the draw. It comes right to Talbot. He'll play it to the near side. His time winds down. Let's test you. Can't get it by Burns. Chance for one last shot. Burns waits. Now he'll take it. And that hit Anton Lander. And that will do it for the period. The San Jose Sharks will have a minute 38 of power play time when we return. But a solid period and a welcome back for Neil Yakupov, David Amber. Welcome back, everyone. 40 minutes in the books. It's a 1-1 game as we take a look at the scoring summaries brought to you by Worley Parsons Scored. Visit WorleyParsonsCord.com. Join our leading industrial construction team and enjoy great benefits and a safe work environment. And it was Blasek getting the goal in the first and then the second period. After missing 22 games with a high ankle sprain, Neil Yakupov ties the game at one and that's where we sit so a couple of guys back in the lineup and a first time oiler making his debut in the form of zach cassie and what have you thought of his night so far i've liked it so far and he he has delivered on what he told us he needs to deliver on game in and game out to be effective he's a guy that will get involved in a lot of the action in the defensive zone i've been impressed because he's been a guy that's been able to get things going offensive zone he's going to go to the front of the net defensive zone he's, zone, he's blocking shots and he was communicating very well he said he needs to get in and get pucks to the net and create some opportunity especially when he gets in and is physical hard hit on brendan dillon hard hit back on brendan dillon what does he do though hey brendan nice to see you again they had some battles in there in dallas some more talking back and forth he said i have to get under the skin of the opposition so they come to me and that allows me to create more space for my line mates and i think he's able to deliver it was unique talking to zach because he did have a real understanding of what makes him a good hockey player. 
So the Oilers will start this third period on the penalty kill. Ryan Nugent Hopkins remains in the box. A huge kill for the Oilers. Huge kill, and they've got to stop taking penalties. It's as simple as that. This power play has got too much talent for the San Jose Sharks to keep giving them the opportunity. The Oilers have won eight games when tied after 40 minutes. They'll try and make it nine here against San Jose. The San Jose Sharks have won four games when knotted after two. Bakarina and Letestu will be up front. Driver and Davidson on the blue line to start this penalty kill. The Sharks 0 for 2. They have generated a total of just three shots on those two power plays. Third period. Joe Thornton to Pavelski. Pavelski, Pavelski. Burns. Goes across to Couture. He lets a shot go. Doesn't make it through. Pacarina can't get it by Couture. Couture behind the net for Thornton. Joe Thornton with the puck now. Thornton is checked by Davidson. Davidson in turn. Harassed there by Marlowe. Driver trying to kill some time as he gets the puck out to Pacarina and down the ice. And the penalty killers will change. That's the hard thing about the power play, playing against the power play of the San Jose Sharks. They've got so many guys who are good at taking the puck away from you that it's hard to clear it. Patrick Marlowe. Around the boards it goes. 48 seconds of power play time remaining. Pavelski comes all the way back up top. Couture fires a shot. Hit Bain and it's cleared away by Darnell Nurse. Nurse. Down to the near side. Bain without his stick. Marlowe with the puck. Marlowe with it now. Patrick Marlowe all the way back to the blue line. Marlowe down to Couture. Couture with a stick in front of him. Thornton hanging on to it. That stick in his way as well. Pavelski shot. Rebound comes to Thornton. Joe Thornton goes behind the net for Couture. He's got Marlowe out in front. Gives it to Thornton. Cut pass to Pavelski. Back to Thornton. Thornton down low. Pavelski out in front for Marlowe and it got by him. Burns with a punch now. Burns off of Teddy Parcel. And down the ice, Ryan Nugent Hopkins is out of the box. And the San Jose Sharks are 0 for 3. 23 to 13. The shots on goal favor the Sharks. Cassian. Here is Hall. Hall. Being watched by Braun as he gets it back to Sekera. Andre Sekera down low, Cassian behind the net, doesn't get to him. Sekera chases it all the way back to the blue line, turns, lets a shot go. Cassian knocks it down. Cassian will give it to Hall. Hall, his shot ends up going behind the net. Schultz pinching in, keeps it in for the orders. Schultz with Cassian out in front. Here is Cassian, touch pass, side of the net is open. Hall can't get a stick on it. Vlasic and Nieto were there as the puck goes into the Sharks bench. Wow. Close chance. Let's go back. Let's go to the Sharks power play. Nifty little play on the entry into the zone. Entry into the zone. Goes around. Joe Thornton just touch passes it real quick. Right to Joe Pavelski who knows exactly where Logan Couture is. The shot actually hits Mark Fain in the stick and that's what breaks it. And this is a smart play by Zach Cassian. Disappears. Touch passes it back and Taylor Hall just can't get there in time. Good play by Matt Nieto coming back to take it away. But it had Martin Jones moving the one way and it was going to be wide open the other. Taylor Hall with one point in his last seven games. Leads this team in every category still, though. Has 41 points on the season. He is tied for eighth in the National Hockey League in points. Davidson chased back into his own zone. He and Gryba on the blue line. Dreisaitl, Pouliot, and Everly are up front. Gryba. Pass intended for Pouliot. Jones plays it around the boards. A bouncing puck is picked up there by Tomas Hurdle. For Hurdle. Pass intended for Marlowe, broken up by Fain, and then Dreisaitl coming back. Took it away from Hurdle. Sekiro waits for a line change. The Oilers will go home to play Calgary on Saturday, then hit the road. They'll be in Florida on Monday, Tampa Bay on Tuesday. Dillon around the boards for Pavelski. Joe Thornton can't get it by Cassian. His shot deflected. A jump ball. Dillon, he knocked down Latestu behind the play. Official didn't want to make that call. I think he saw it. Donskoy gets spun around there by Latestu. As Mark Latestu did not appreciate the treatment he got in the shark zone. 
came back and took it out on Jonas Donskoy. Dillon almost gave that away. Now he fans on it behind the net. Danilo uses the boards. Can't get it by Nurse. His shot goes wide. Korpagoski races over to keep it in on the far side. Now it's dumped down the ice and a race ensues. Darnell Nurse gets there ahead of Donskoy. 15-37 left to go in a 1-1 game. A second meeting of the season between the Sharks and the Oilers. The Oilers won the first one 4-3 in overtime. Ryan Nugent Hopkins at center plays it off the boards for Hall. Hill backhanded in for Bukowski. Right, that is Pacarina giving chase. Getting a little help from Nugent Hopkins. Nice trip right there too, Paul Martin. Tripped up Nugent Hopkins. And the puck comes out to center. Wes McCauley does not feel like raising his arm right now. Davidson dishes to Hall. Hall, a wrist shot. Jones, a big rebound. Hurdle. Well, dump it in. He's got Pavelski with him. Along with Joe Thornton as the puck comes down into Shark territory. The Oilers will make a change. Pavelski trying to take advantage. Takes the shot. Now he'll get it to Hurdle. Hurdle back to the point it comes for Braun. Braun plays it around the boards. Pavelski. Braun waits. Now he'll move in. Centering pass. And Pavelski almost hit that puck. The hands of Joe Pavelski. He put it just wide as Dreisaitl comes back the other way. Dreisaitl cuts to the middle, feeds Sekera. Sekera, rich shot. Jones, the save again. A juggling save by Martin Jones. That's why you stop in front of the net. You're Jordan Everly. You should put the brakes on there. You've got a dynamite opportunity to slam it in. Martin Jones is giving up rebounds. 15 shots fired his way. 14 saves. As Ward gets it to Nieto. Nieto is checked. And hit hard by Darnell Nurse. Nurse plays it around the boards, intercepted by Ward. He'll get it to Nieto. Nieto tries to go between his legs with a pass. Schultz. Off the boards. Ward trying to keep it in. Can't do it. And Elmo will just backhand it in and make a change. Schultz to Nurse. Nurse to the middle it goes. Jones will leave it there for Dillon. Dillon around the boards to Melo. Well, get it to Tommy Wingles. Wingles can't find it. Purcell can. Purcell shot. Finally gets through. He had a couple of cracks at it. And Jones made the save. Jones takes a look. Looks at his option. Gives the puck to Dillon. And Dillon gets it out for Logan Couture. Gets by him. Quickly back the other way. Here comes Yakupov. Yakupov snaps a shot off the post. The rebound for Korpakoski. Couldn't get the shot away, but... He gets something in that. Dale Yakupov feeling it. And his first game back since being injured November 25th in Carolina. Has a goal tonight in the puck right now. Yakupov will play it back to Fane. Get it to Davidson. Davidson right up the middle for Hall. Taylor Hall lost his balance. He's in a battle with Paul Martin. Martin will get it to Carlson. Carlson will go across the ice to Tomas Hurdle. Tomas Hurdle runs into Sekera. Fane to Sekera. Sekera up the middle. Almost gave it away in a pass attempt for Bakarina. Pavelski with it now. Pavelski to Burns. Frank Burns for Tomas Hurdle. That pass didn't work. Sekera plays it around the boards. Hurdle intercepts. Keeps it in for Thornton. He'll play it back to the point. Burns waiting for it. Burns with a wrist shot blocked by Hall. Pavelski gets it to Thornton. Thornton moving in. Joe Thornton with a button hook. He'll go up top to Martin. Martin will give it right back to Joe Thornton. He'll go cross ice. Here comes a shot from Burns. The rebound sits there. Talbot looking for it. Finds it. Covers it. And gets the whistle. Mail Yakupov. One goal on the night. And look how close he comes to getting his second. Welcome back. The other night when asked what uh, the Edmonton Oilers would miss most without Matt Hendricks, Taylor Hall's answer was a DJ. Now, at times, Jordan Eberle has been the one to fill in for Matt Hendricks, who is the one that handles the music in the room. And Matt has really varying 
types of music style. He'll uh, sneak in a little bit of Justin Bieber. He likes his reggae and throws in some Bob Marley, but he can also throw in his uh, heavy metal and his ACDC, Thunderstruck, uh, Back in Black. And by the way, guys, join Kevin when we leave to go back to the hotel. We have to take a ride on the highway to hell. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> okay. Bon Scott is if, rolling over. If you're in singing on the median right bus, that's exactly what that'll be. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll, Gene. 11 15 to go in the second period. Canelo takes a hit there from Cassian. Ward. He'll get it to Marlowe. Patrick Marlowe. A game the zone against Nurse. Couldn't do it. Letestu plays the glass and out. I like the back pressure that the Oilers have brought. When the Sharks enter the zone, the Oilers are coming back hard in the middle and trying to take away the options on the entry. He's pulling out Dreisaitl and Amberley out there now. Tom's going. Trying to take it away from Talbot. Dreisaitl. He is checked and turned by Wingles, but it's offside at the Oilers' blue line. So the Oilers right now is 24-16 in shots, and the Oilers have had a good period again. They have played a hard game. Their four key was to have more will than skill, and you're seeing that. A physical game, although they have ended up in the penalty box three times, but you're seeing drive, you're seeing extra effort, you're seeing guys try to work inside the big bodies of the San Jose Sharks that John and Colby talked about at the start of the show. Last time the Oilers were here was last February. They won the game 5-4 in a shootout. I think the winner on that one with the, with the 12th shooter. It took a while. They are 3-6-1 and one in their last 10 visits to the Shark Tank. Just 10 minutes left to go in regulation time. It's a 1-1 game. Burns. Dumps it in as the Sharks and Oilers make changes. This is Eric Riva to Brandon Davidson. Davidson fires it around the boards. Waiting for it is Paul Martin. He doesn't have it. Burns does. Carlson dumps it in. Kearney giving chase. Anton Lander with a pass to Mark Fain. Quickly up for Korpakoski. Korpakoski chips it by Braun. Korpakoski ends up behind the net. Yakupov with the puck now. Yakupov shot. Stopped by Jones. A broken stick for Lori Korpakoski. He's got to head to the bench. Braun sends it out to center. Sekera caught that puck. Got it to settle down. Hall trying to get free. He gets checked. And it's Hurdle playing it back to Vlasic. Mark Edward Vlasic. Now to Justin Braun. Braun to the middle. It goes for Pavelski. Joe Pavelski. Centering pass. And it's cut off by Talbot. And he'll hang on to it. Rogers Oilers Hockey from the SAP Center here in San Jose. Welcome back. Three games on Hockey Night in Canada this Saturday featuring four Canadian teams. The evening gets underway with Hockey Central Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Mountain. Then Toronto visits Boston at 5 p.m. Mountain on CBC and City. At the same time, Montreal is in St. Louis on Sportsnet. And the double-ender is capped off by the Battle of Alberta at 8 p.m. Mountain as Calgary heads north to Edmonton. While the Flames and Oilers matchup will be seen on both CBC and Sportsnet. G, nine minutes left to go in regulation time. Burns at the point. The puck hops over his stick. Pavelski shoots it right back in. Talbot slows it down. Hurdle from the corner. Check. Fain. Teddy Purcell quickly up for Sekera. Sekera's got Cassian. Takes the shot. Now he'll let it go and he put it wide. Thornton picks it up on the far side. Joe Thornton. Gets it to Tomas Hurdle. Tomas Hurdle shot stopped by Talbot. He juggled it for just a second, then reached out and covered. Good save by Cam Talbot. Juggled a little bit. Tomas Hurdle. He's just going to snap this to the net, and he's going to follow his shot. That is something that happens with the San Jose Sharks often. They don't turn away when they shoot the puck. They shoot and follow. That, again, a lot of it had to do with Todd McCall and his coaching style, but Joe Pavelski was the guy that really worked on it, and everybody has picked it off up of that. So Cam Talbot, smart to cover that. 
Joe Ward will take this face off against Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Now it's going to be Marlowe's turn. That comes back to Braun for Marlowe. Marlowe. Checked by Schultz. Nieto centering pass picked up by Iro Pacarina. Pacarina to Nugent Hopkins. Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Steps up. Gets by Schultz behind the net. Pacarina gets double teamed. Classic. Stripped to the puck by Hall. To the middle it goes. Opportunity for Schultz. And a diving play by Braun prevented it from getting through. Nugent Hopkins. With it now, Brian Nugent Hopkins back to the blue line. Darnell Nurse with a wrist shot cut by Jones. No rebound for Iro Pacarina. The Grip, saving you more on furniture, mattresses, appliances, and big screen TVs. Shop at Safeway today. Watch future Sportsnet telecasts. You could be our next lucky winner. You could win a trip for two to a Dreams Resort and Spa, courtesy of RedTag.ca, where Canada shops for great travel deals. Shots are 26-18 in favor of the Sharks. Davidson shot stopped by Jones. Couture around the boards. Picked up there by Burns. Burns off the boards for Wingles. Tommy Wingles moving in. Here is Wingles in front. The bouncing puck. Couture couldn't get the shot away. Couture. Wingles. He is denied. Wingles plays it back to the point. That is Dylan going cross ice. Burns hammers the shot and Talbot makes the save. Tommy Wingles wants to push the pace. He's on the weak side. He's away from the puck, and he is going to drive skate all the way across the ice. There he is, number 57, and he just gets that little chip pass behind. Now he's got that pass to the net. He's going to take a good stick save by Talbot and then a good clear to the side, but smart play by Brent Burns. Use the boys as the extra man, and Tommy Wingles pushing the pace, stretching out of the zone quickly. The owners have done a good job of limiting an offense that is ranked sixth in the league. They average 2.85 goals a game to the San Jose Sharks. Anton Lander out there with Lori Korpakoski and Neil Yakupov. Yakupov getting some extra ice time. He has the only goal for the Oilers tonight, and he also rang one off the post. To Pavelski in the middle. He is checked and quickly. Here comes Yakupov. His shot goes over top of the cage. Like his idea. Keep moving, shoot the puck. Burns. Quickly. Up for Thornton. Schultz. Hangs it around the boards. Waiting for it there is Bakarina. He finds Nugent Hopkins with speed across the line. Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Hall. Back up top, Schultz hammers that shot, and he put it wide. Nurse picks it up on the near side. He'll get it down to Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins going towards the net. Right out in front, it got by Hall. Comes right to Schultz. Hall with it now. He's given a bump and a chance for Pavelski to get the puck out. Does get it to Thornton. End of the shift for them. Ocarina quickly gets it to Nurse. He'll head off. Under six minutes left to go in regulation time. Davidson. Now to Dreisaitl. Martin plays it back for Burns. Pouliot, Dreisaitl, and Everly up front for the orders. Dreiba and Davidson on the blue line. Everly keeps it in. Pouliot bumps into Martin, but there is Burns to get the puck. He is stripped by Dreisaitl. It comes to Pouliot. Benoit Pouliot for Dreisaitl. Davidson trying to keep it in against Ward. Ward, an outlet pass. An opportunity now for Nieto. Nieto to Marlowe. Back to Nieto. Right out in front. Stopped by Cam Talbot. Big stop. Pouliot back the other way with Dreisaitl and Everly. Benoit Pouliot trying to center it. Martin broke that up. Dreisaitl picks it up in the corner. Back up top. Drive a one-time shot. That one is cut by Jones, and he quickly gets it to Tommy Wingles. Wingles can't find the puck. Can't get it to settle down. Don Scott plays it back to DeMello. Over to Dillon. 
Dillon. Right up the middle comes Donskoy. Donskoy. He gets knocked down. Couture trying to carry on. Stop. Couture gets it again. Logan Couture from a sharp angle. Talbot the save. Wingles. Battles with Teddy Purcell. Gets a little help from Letestu. Puck comes free. Purcell's got it. Purcell to Sekera. Gains the line. And offside is the call at the line. Cam Talbot keeps it a 1-1 game. He's made 28 saves so far in this one. Neil Yakupov, first game back after the high ankle sprain. He has been a very noticeable player in a very positive way. Using his speed, drive skating, get the puck to the front net. Great chance right there. Here's the beautiful goal. He jumped up on a pass by Lori Korpakoski. Neil Yakupov gets another opportunity. Jumps in. Quick shot. Snaps it off the goal post. Neil Yakupov back in tight. Turns, fires, gets it towards the net. Almost every time he's been on the ice is resulting in an offensive zone time and a chance. 422 left to go as the puck ends up in the Sharks bench. The one thing though that Todd McClellan is careful not to do is overplan. You, your, your urge as a coach is to, when the guy's going well, keep putting them out there, keep putting them out there. But his first game back, you're not sure of his win, you're not sure of his, his energy level, you're not sure of how he can keep the game up, how his legs are. But expecting this last 420 that Nail will get a little bit more ice time than he has so far. 12 career games against the San Jose Sharks. Six goals, three assists, nine points. Braun plays it off the boards for Pavelski. Pavelski. Nurse turns him back the other way. Hall, Pokarinen, and Nugent Hopkins, the forward line for the Oilers. 29-20, the shot's on goal. Come on, Hurdle, that's his goal. Big rebound given up by Talbot, cleared away by Mark Fain. Taylor Hall sweeps the puck in. Classic. Checked by Nugent Hopkins. Pavelski. Can't get it by. Pedro Pacarina. Or that's Teddy Purcell. Hall with it now. Hall comes out of the corner. Back to the blue line. Trying to get it over to Sekera. Went off the stick of Lassick. Sekera sees an opening as the Sharks make a change. It's passed for Cassian. Back the other way. Comes Vieto. He gets surrounded. Cassian. Plays the puck up, and that off. puck goes out of play. That went off the forecheck. Build your home your way with Edmonton's award-winning home builder, Coventry Homes, the preferred builder of the Edmonton Oilers. I thought this most definitely went off the, the forechecker. And Zach Cassian was pleading his case, so Zach Cassian brings the puck back. Patrick Marlowe's on top of him right here. <laughs> Let's have a look at, look at this. Zach Cassian's got it. Turns. Patrick Marlowe's stick is right there and it ramps up. I think this is definitely off of Patrick Marlowe's stick. I cannot believe. There's the stick. It looked like it ramped up off of that. Am I wrong on that one? Am I not seeing it properly? The yeah, referees had a discussion and a critical moment power play now coming for the. Uh, Todd McClellan is furious on this call. Absolutely furious. And I, from that replay, I don't blame him. It is the fourth power play for the San Jose Sharks. Anton Lander against Joe Pavelski. Now Pavelski gets kicked out, but they put in another strong center, and that is Joe Thornton. From the faceoff. A scramble goes into the corner, and it's controlled by the orders. It is Lander who sends it down the ice. He's up front with Bakarina, Davidson, and Dreibach. On the blue line, Burns, Milo, Couture, Pavelski, and Thornton. Thornton with the puck now. He'll drop it back to Pavelski. Pavelski gets it back to Burns, but he had Lander right there. Pavelski's got it now. He'll give it to Thornton. Joe Thornton. To Patrick Marlow back up top. Burns with a shot. Rebound chance for Pavelski. Broken stick for Brandon Davidson. Pavelski with the puck. He will give it to Marlow. Marlow goes cross ice. Couture can't get it to settle down. Pakalinen can't get it out. That's good play by Pavelski. Really good play. That's the extra effort. Marlow goes across. A chance for Burns. And he just missed. Couture back to the point. Thornton waiting for it there. Joe Thornton goes across to Logan Couture to Marlow in the middle, and it's cleared down the ice by Eric Ryder. We need to get off quick. The owner's penalty killers will change with 55 seconds left to go 
in the penalty to Zach Cassian. Burns. Mark Edward Lassick sends it around the boards. Great play by Talbot. He juggled it. Came right out in front. Lassick shot. Talbot swipes at it. It's loose. And Mark Fain sends it down the ice. Cam Talbot had the right idea as he stopped that puck from going around. And almost misplayed it. Here's Lassick. 24 seconds left to go in the power play. Kovac Hurdle gains the zone with Don Stoy. Now to Joel Ward on the near side. Ward on the half wall. Back up top for Vlasic. Vlasic moves to the middle. Dishes to Ward. Ward back to Vlasic. Vlasic steps into a shot. And it's deflected by Hurdle into the netting. Face off will go outside. Tomas Hurdle was the guy that deflected that. And this is the extra effort that, that makes it difficult to play against this power play. As the puck is going to get cleared, Joe Pavelski in front dives, just knocks it away. What would have been an easy clear and down the ice, and the Sharks get back to the attack. And it comes a one-toucher that Brent Burns usually would put that away. One-touch pass, one-touch back to Brent Burns, and Cam Talbot with a really, really huge save. Pete DeBoer looks on. His club, he and Todd McClellan will be coaching together in the North American team, Team North America. Met yesterday at the hotel the orders were staying at to discuss which team. Peter Shirelli, Scotty, or, um, Stan Bomer here as well. And with seven seconds left, faceoff is critical. Zach Cassian in his first game in an Oiler uniform. Can't wait for that clock to hit zero. And now he's out of the penalty box. San Jose is 0 for 4. We've got a minute 20 left in regulation time. Sekera. Around the boards it goes. Burns waiting for it there. He gets checked by Pacarina. Nugent Hopkins with Hall out in front. Nugent Hopkins still has it. Ryan Nugent Hopkins drops it back for Iro Pacarina. He'll play it behind the net for Nugent Hopkins. Less than a minute to go in regulation time. Here is Schultz with a shot. Jones the save right at the back of the net was Martin Jones. You can't get much deeper than that. No, you can't. And he was pushed back there because Yero Pakarinen was making the play close to the net. He's going to go right to the net. He gets pushed in, actually, by Brent Burns. And, Brent, and Martin Jones is a big goalie. He's got to be able to fight that off. He's right back deep anyway. He gets pushed back in the net. Stands up, though, and makes that save. That would have been an interesting call, wouldn't it? That would have went Jones sixth in the league and wins. But he and Cam Talbot each looking for a W tonight. There's 45 seconds left to go in regulation time. Nieto backhands it in. Davidson around the grabber, around the boards. Gets by Martin. Opportunity for Pouliot. Over to Everly. Everly with Pouliot driving the front. He was tied up there by Paul Martin. Dry saddle to Everly. 27 seconds left to go. Dry saddle. He'll give it to Sekera. The pass failed to click. Sekera back into his own zone. Darnell Nurse waits for the change. Chance for one last rush. Tipped in by Zach Cassian with Lechescu and Teddy Purcell. Time winding down. Long shot tipped away by Talbot. And for the second time this season, the San Jose Sharks and the Edmonton Oilers are going to go to overtime. Rogers Oilers Hockey. Brought to you by Rogers. With Rogers, stay connected wherever your day takes you. By Molson Canadian, die-hard fan and proud partner of the Edmonton Oilers. By Ford, official automotive partner of the Edmonton Oilers. By Scotiabank, you're richer than you think. And by the Rexall family of pharmacies. Let's take a look and see how we got to this overtime. It was Mark Edward Vlasic in the first period beating Cam Talbot short side. Cam looks down to see his positioning. Heck of a shot by the defense and rings off the back bar and in. Cam did not like that goal. You can see from his reaction. And then after that in the second period, Nail Yakupov replies on a good play up along the boards by Lori Korpakoski. Hustles over, gets the puck. A beautiful pass past Justin Bronstick and Nail Yakupov makes no mistake. I love the celebration. It says, I'm back, baby. But Lori Korpakoski was the guy that really made everything happen on that. 
So the Oilers go to overtime for the 14th time this year for the San Jose Sharks. It's just the seventh time that they have gone to extra hockey. This overtime period brought to you by Remax, the right agents for today's market. Jordan Eberle, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Andre Sekera will start this overtime period against the two Joes, Thornton and Pavelski, with Burns on the blue line. Remember, Frank Burns was also a forward. This is a talented sixer out there. <laughs> it is Pavelski against Nugent Hopkins. Andre Sekera with two overtime game-winning goals. Burns will give it to Thornton. To Pavelski, up the middle for Burns. Burns moving in against Nugent Hopkins. And Nugent Hopkins took the puck away. Ryan Nugent Hopkins starts back for the Oilers. Nugent Hopkins across the blue line. Drops for Everly. Everly to Sekera. His shot didn't make it through. And Burns blocked that. Pavelski. The Sharks spread themselves out. Nearly too many a chase. It was almost like a high jump for hurdle for Brent Burns. Let's take a look at December 9th. 4-3 was the final score in the first meeting of the season between these two. Leon Dreisaitl, backhand juicy pass. He has Brent Burns sliding. Brent Burns commits. Leon Dreisaitl in that backhand pass. So dangerous. And Taylor Hall wins it for the Edmonton Oilers in another great celebration. We have a little bit of a timeout here. We have a discussion. Yep, timeout. Hall and Dreisaitl are out there with Schultz. Thornton, Pavelski, and Burns. The, sand, the timeout is because the puck was iced by San Jose and Brent Burns and Joe Thornton had to jump off the ice and couldn't touch it because two more guys had come on and it would have been way too many men. It would have been a power play for the Edmonton Oilers. So Burns, Thornton, and Pavelski had to stay out. I'm not sure that's much of an advantage for the, for the Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> San Jose, 3-7 and seven in their last 10 games at home. They have 45 points on the season. The Oilers with 39. And it's an extra long timeout. Why? Because Joe Pavelski's smart. He's got the towel. He's toweling off his stick. He's toweling off his hands. Pete DeBoer argues whether the guy has ever came off or not. So instead of a 30-second timeout, it ends up to be about a minute. I'm going as fast as I can, Ralph. Just, but I gotta dry my stick off. Dry sidle and Pavelski now, as Pavelski is directing traffic, getting Thornton and Burns in position. From the draw to the corner, Hall reaches for it. He's checked. Pavelski's got it. Joe Pavelski drops it back for Thornton. Joe Thornton lost it to Hall. Taylor Hall. To the corner, checked by Pavelski this time. Thornton comes in, steals the puck, gets it to Pavelski. Pavelski to Burns. Burns is going to take his time as the forwards will change. Burns now has Hurdle and Marlowe on the ice. Burns is going to head off as well. Here comes Tomas Hurdle. Hurdle moving in. Hurdle has got Vlasic. Snaps a shot. Talbot slides over and makes the save. Boy, nobody recognized that change. He's got a little jump in. Justin Schultz, he had a little jump in, a dive in there by Leon Dreisaitl, and that leaves the wide side open. And that is Mark Edward Vlasic getting off the bench. Hurdle makes the right play, but a good save by Cam Talbot. He was the one guy that read the play. Anton Lander will take this draw against Tomas Hurdle. 3.39 left to go in overtime. Hurdles out. Marlowe's in. Marlowe's a natural center. Looks like everybody on San Jose yes. is a center. That's true. From the faceoff. Classic. Skates back into his own zone. Nugent Hopkins up front with Lander. Sekera on the blue line. Andre Sekera controls it. Gives it back to Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Here is Sekera. Turned it over to Tomas Hurdle. Hurdle. Down low for Marlowe. Milo in the corner. 
Matt Nieto on the ice now. A steal, Marla. No button hook, checked by Sekera. Nieto over there to try and get possession. Sekera fights him off as well. But a neat little pass to Jordan Eberle. Eberle has Couture right on him. Eberle trying to get free. Nieto over there to break it up, but Eberle picks it up. Jordan Eberle. Got to deal with Burns. Eberle. Nugent Hopkins and Davidson. Brian Nugent Hopkins driving for that. Nugent Hopkins! Couldn't get the shot. Has the block. Gets it to Eberle. Jordan Eberle. He and Nugent Hopkins along with Brendan Davidson. Now a change. Here is Teddy Purcell. Purcell circles the net. He's got Hall in front. Purcell. Davidson calling for it. And Davidson will have to go back into his own zone. 2.17 left in overtime. Hall, Purcell, Davidson. Taylor Hall with speed across the line. A button hook for Taylor Hall. Hall hanging onto it. Nieto watching him. Hall. Trying to find an opening. Hall. Stopped by Nieto. Teddy Purcell carries on. Jones makes the save and he will hang on. I dig the three on three, man. I really do. It's great both ways, and Taylor Hall just is able to rag it, rag it. But first, now, Ryan Nugent Hopkins gets that terrific opportunity. Nice save by Martin Jones. He stays with it, knocks it away with his blocker. It's a big goaltender who has that little bit of extra reach. And the last play was Taylor Hall. He just fights, fights, and here comes Teddy Purcell. Taylor Hall does a nice job picking his man, Matt Nieto, and that allows Purcell to get that chance. Dale Yakupov is out there now with Leon Dreisaitl and Darnell Nurse. Yakupov checked by Thornton Dreisaitl. Comes up with it. Leon Dreisaitl. He'll go for escape. Lasik watching him. Lasik, Pavelski, and Thornton against Dreisaitl, Nurse, and Yakupov. Darnell Nurse will bring it in for Edmonton. Nurse stops. Pavelski steals. He'll play it to the near side. A race for the puck. Dreisaitl's got it. Leon Dreisaitl lost it to Vlasic. Vlasic gets it to Thornton. 123 left to go in extra hockey. Here is Vlasic moving in. Steps into a shot. Talbot the save. The rebound is there for Neil Yakupov. Yakupov got hung up. Pavelski lost his stick. He pins it against the boards. Now it comes free. Yakupov trying to get loose against Donskoy. Donskoy back the other way. Donskoy back to Braun. Braun goes cross ice. Goes in the shot to top of the save. Nurse comes up with a rebound as we've got less than a minute to go in overtime. Darnell Nurse trying to get started. He gets double teamed. Dreisaitl back to help out. Yakupov wants to get a change. Dreisaitl will wait. Now he'll find Jordan Eberle. Eberle waits out in front. Sekera, oh what a save by Jones! Andre Sekera looks for his third overtime game-winning goal denied by Martin Jones. Just missed in Arizona. He just missed in Arizona and he just misses right here. He's gonna go stick side and it hits the stick. It hit the shaft of the stick of Martin Jones. He's got Martin Jones buying it and he hits the shaft of the stick of Martin Jones. He went by and it's funny because he went by and said something yeah. to him. And there's his reaction. <laughs> he goes on, by. Man. He played, remember, last year in L.A. for that brief time. He did play with Martin Jones, so he had a thing to say to his former team. Nugent Hopkins wins the draw. Everly with a puck now in speed. Jordan Everly puts the shot go. Jones makes the save, and he will hang on. Yeah, hey, Winner's doing a really nice job on faceoffs and on the overtime. And... Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Jordan Eberle get out there on the three-on-three, -three, and because of their skill level and their poise with the puck, they get chance after chance, and Sekera seems to work off of them very well. Marlowe wins the draw, gets it back to Burns. Patrick Marlowe. Tomas Hurdle. Hurdle moving in with Burns, cuts to the middle. Hurdle still has it, throws it out in front. Tipped by Marlowe wide, Burns down low. Marlowe from the corner to Hurdle. Hurdle. Top, shot pass for Marlowe, good play by Everly. They avoid a big hit from Burns, and this game, as time winds down, no goal. No goal. Burns cut in front, put it in, but the horn sounded, and this one's going to a shootout. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the clock had definitely expired, without a doubt. Wes McCauley was right on top of that one.
Let's have the overhead with the clock. 0.3, 2, 1, 0, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. Yeah, that's not going to count. Listen for the horn. You heard the whistle long before. I didn't hear the horn, did you? It is the fourth time that the Oilers have gone to a shootout. San Jose going to a shootout for just the second time. And for the first time this season, a team will lose in the shootout because both teams are perfect so far. San Jose 1 and 0, Oilers 3 and 0. Let's take a look now at the play of the game. It's brought to you by Rogers NHL Game Center Live. Follow your team on any screen from anywhere. Quite a few to choose from tonight, but it's got to be Neil Yakupov's goal. First game back after the high ankle sprain. A juicy pass from Rory Korpakoski. A perfectly executed two-on-one. Korpakoski freezes his man on the stick. Terrific celebration as to sell everybody in San Jose. I am back, and look what I can do. The Shootout, brought to you by REMAX, the right agents for today's market. December 9th at Rexall Place, the Oilers won 4-3 in overtime. Here on Todd McCullen's first game back as head coach of an opposition team, this one is going to a shootout. Martin Jones, big in overtime. He's a big goalie anyway, but he was huge in overtime, making some serious stops to keep this, or allow this game to get to an overtime. We've got some pretty good shooters. In, sorry, pardon me. we got some pretty good shooters on the San Jose side. 36 saves for Cam Talbot, and now he's going to be called on to make a few more. The first shooter for the San Jose Sharks is Joe Pavelski. Next little stop up in a shot. Pavelski scores. He didn't stop up at all. Just shot. Him. He's banked on a shootout. He really is good. He's got a great release. Usually he'll stop up a little bit right there. That little shoulder juke, though. Freezes Cam Talbot for a second. Goes five. Oh. Jordan Eberle would try and match. He is the first shooter for the Edmonton Oilers. Eberle. Didn't get the shot he wanted. Usually Jordan will stick handle in and get to go high up top. But usually backhand, he can elevate that quick. He didn't elevate it as quickly as he wanted. And Jones is able to make the save. Second short shooter for the San Jose Sharks is Jonas Donskoy. Donskoy, what a move. That's, you said it perfectly, it's just a great move from Donskoy. Sells that play to the back end. He's got an easy slide in. And right now, it's up to Ryan Nugent Hopkins to keep this shootout alive for the Edmonton Oilers. Nugent Hopkins against Jones. The game on the line. Stacked by Jones. And the San Jose Sharks have now won four straight games. They defeat the Oilers in the shootout. First time they have won back-to-back -back games at SAP Center. Unfortunately for Todd McCollum, his first game back doesn't end the way he wanted it. Martin Jones makes his 19th victory, his fifth win at home. And the Edmonton Oilers continue to look for a way to win away from Rexall. And win against the Pacific Division team. Nice save by Martin Jones as he's not going to give up the five hole. Martin Jones really deserves a big pat on the back for this game because in the overtime, and I thought the third period, the Oilers played the type of game they really wanted. In fact, I look at the Oilers game tonight and I thought it was solid. I thought it was strong. But with the San Jose Sharks, Martin Jones, he's staying out because he's going to get a star, and the guys are patting each other on the back for their win. Speaking of stars, let's take a look at the three stars. Brought to you, as always, by Molson Canadian, diehard fan and proud partner of the Edmonton Oilers. Martin Jones is the third star with 24 saves. Cam Talbot, 36. Many of those came 
in the second period. He was solid. Neil Yakupov, I thought he had some great jump all day long, all night. Had the goal in return from injury and was dangerous on the ice. San Jose is now 6-4-1. and one. In the Pacific Division, the Edmonton Oilers fall to 5-7-3. and three. Doug Wilson made a huge move in the offseason. General manager of the San Jose Sharks. He gave up a first rounder to Boston for Martin Jones. And Martin Jones comes up big for his team. They needed to solidify the goaltending situation. They did that. Two goals in the shootout. One from Pavelski, one from Donskoy. And that ended the night for the Oilers. Here's what's coming up for the Oilers next. It's a battle of Alberta and their third straight game against the Pacific Division foe. So far on this road trip, the Oilers lost in overtime in Arizona on Tuesday. They lose in the shootout here against San Jose. They will be looking for two points when they go back home to take on the Calgary Flames. If they play like they did tonight, if they play with that will instead of skill, they're going to have a good chance. So the Oilers come in to San Jose after defeating the Sharks on December the 9th. Todd McClellan's first game back in his old haunt ends in a shootout loss. And these teams will hook up again March 8th in Edmonton. Carly and Jamie already in progress. Sportsnet Central.